So I'm going to do a presentation on cytogenosis, which is commonly called bobcat fever. So it's caused by a protozoan parasite that is similar to uh, Ebola and malaria, and it only affects cats. It starts in the bobcat, and like they get infected. Um, and then they kind of get over it, and then they just become carriers. <coughs> and then the ticks bite them, <coughs> and it goes through the ticks to domestic cats. And then from them, it just pretty much kills cats. Um, it was first reported in 1976, and it was pretty much just in the Missouri area, I believe. It said about like 80% of bobcats <coughs> were like shown to carry it. Um, it's only transmitted through the blood, so it's not like there's saliva or anything. So it's pretty much just through ticks. And it takes about five to twenty days for the for the uh, parasite to actually like get through the body and cause problems. And after the fever actually spikes, the cats usually die within about two or three days. And it's a really no vaccine for it. And this is a blood smear of a uh, cat's blood. These little purple dots in here are the uh, parasite. So are you saying that's the red blood cells? Yeah, that's the red blood cells. Of the cat, and some of them are infected by the parasite, some aren't. Is it always just one to one? Or is there, uh, as that screen would tell you? I mean, it's probably just random. Okay. Like, yeah, this is just a regular blood cell and this is the one with the parasite. Because that would be a, a great a histology test because if you said, what's the purple thing, some people might say the nucleus, mm -hmm. right? It looks like a nucleus, but you know that no mammalian red blood cells have a nucleus when they're in the circulation, yes. And uh, if it's like too early in like the life cycle of the parasite, you might not be able to see that at first. Um, so this is a map of like about where the infected bobcats are and thus infected domestic cats. Um, so there's some bobcats only up here, but like no like reported domestic cats and the same in here. It's pretty much all in the southeastern part of the states. So some symptoms are like they can't eat, they're tired all the time, they have high fever, uh, they'll get jaundice and anemia, uh, their lymph nodes will enlarge and their gums will get pale from uh, losing blood because the blood gets infected and then they just kind of like destroy the cells. Um, they'll become more vocal because they're very uncomfortable. And their spleens and livers will enlarge because of all the blood that is being destroyed. So since there's no vaccine, uh, it's best to keep cats indoors or uh, <coughs> use tick preventatives like collars or stuff like that. And also since dogs can carry the ticks, it's best to check the dogs and prevent ticks on them too so that they don't give the cats the ticks. And then some cats are also just genetically resistant, but they can also become carriers if they get bitten. So there is some treatment for it, but it's really, really expensive. Um, there's a 10 day regime that is pretty much just like an anti-malarial and like uh, antibiotic and stuff like that. And apparently they really do not like the anti-malarial because it's just like thick and gross to them or something. Now um, that's orally, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's orally. Um, and if they have like really bad anemia from the blood loss, uh, they might need blood transfusions. 
Um, and the 10 day regime is about $600, give or take. And it's probably best to keep them hospitalized until they actually eat again, otherwise they could just die immediately. Um, but if it's caught really early, like before the fever, it's a general okay chance for recovery, still not too good, but if they do survive, they will become immune, but they'll just become carriers. Okay, questions for Crystal? I, I got a question now. Is it the only way to diagnose it is to look at the red blood cells to see the parasite in there? Is that what they do um, always, or is there other ways? The only thing that I saw was through the blood smears, okay. but also since it doesn't take too long to actually like die from it, then there's not really much to actually look at. Okay, because when you find the parasite in the red blood cells, it's almost too late then you're saying? Pretty much. And I bet you when you do a smear, if you count it up, it'd be interesting to like count up a hundred red blood cells and see how many have the parasite in it. You know, because I'm sure it multiplies over time, and maybe you'll see a few in the field, and then later on, you know, maybe everybody's got it. Oh yeah. I like that slide though. It could really fool you about being a nucleus, not a parasite. And uh, since it only goes through the blood, it can't be uh, given to like kittens and stuff. Okay. It can't go through the. Uh, the milk or anything. Okay. Questions, comments? What was that?